Welcome back to Listen Up Podcast at Grace Christian University. Welcome, Blake Tiger Streak. Blake? <laughs> I mean, near the end of the semester, we're only four weeks till the semester concludes. So because oh. of that, people are probably feeling pretty bleak. Oh. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling that. Hey, that's good. I'm feeling really good. How about you? I'm feeling good. Okay. I, I would say there's a reason why we're in the positions we are in. It's because we inspire joy. <laughs> <laughs> Joy personified in one sound effect. Go. <laughs> right there, you laughed. Oh, there you go. You, you want to hear mine? Oh. Joy. Ooh! <laughs> That's going to be interesting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine hearing that through your headphones? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joy, though. Yeah. Personified. <laughs> okay, we have a special flashback in 15 seconds. It's not much happened last week on the event front, so here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, last week on Monday, we had Mall Hunt. Not everyone found me, uh, as my prediction was. Uh, and then we had Seth Swalwell speak on Wednesday, but before that, on Tuesday, we had John Michael speak. It was a great time. I'm done. Wow. 14. Oh, I did it. That was so fast. That was literally all we had. Wow. <laughs> also, today's episode is unofficially sponsored by Kahawa. Come get coffee. Wow. Uh, I don't know what, what a phrase. Is. I don't Come think that get happened. coffee. Come get coffee. Coffee, coffee. Life in a cup. That's a little better. <laughs> that sounds like a really bad documentary. Hmm. Life in a cup. Addiction to caffeine. Anyways. Oh. What's next, Gabby? We have our student connection question. Okay, the student connection question for the week is, what is your favorite season and why? Miranda is amazing, said fall because the weather is so cozy and warm while drinking pumpkin spice lattes and the leaves start changing colors and falling off the trees. I love the smell of decaying nature, don't you? Sure do. Isn't that just a blast? <laughs> Nate Baller said, winter for basketball. Man, what do you think it's like playing basketball in the snow? Probably not great. Well, why would you be excited about that? Couldn't tell you. Isabel underscore Gurink, wonder who that is, said, summer because I love taking a nap outside in the sun. That is great. I like to think there's many other reasons for liking the summer. <laughs> Maybe a few more. But, but uh, that is a good one. Not one that I would think about. So thank you for that, Isabel. And Lucy.Nuzbaum said, winter, skiing and snowboarding. Also summer, longboarding and boating. Well, two drastic choices. Look Very different. What do you think boating on ice is like? You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you are You're right. just sitting. <laughs> I'm just imagining the boat like with the with the rudder and the motor just going, <laughs> going through Whoa! the ice. Uh, like, wow, amusement park. There you go. You can just go to one. Gabby, what is your favorite season and why? <sighs> I love every season except for summer because I hate the heat. Hmm. But if I had to pick one, either spring or fall, I like transition seasons because it's not too hot, it's not too cold. You can go out and do stuff, or you can stay in and be cozy. That is true. Mm -hmm. I would say my se favorite seasons, fall is number one. Okay. Winter is number two. Really? Mm -hmm. And then <sighs> summer is number three and spring is fourth. Why spring last? Spring is last because growing up where I did in Canada, I never really got a true spring because winter would extend until That's true. That's March kind of or April. Very similar to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then like suddenly it's like blazing heat because it's the summer in mm -hmm. Canada where I'm at where I grew up actually got pretty hot summers. So I really? Never, yeah. So huh. I never really had a, a true spring experience. That's fair. Yeah. I guess I always forget that Michigan has like an extended winter. So there's really no summer or spring, mm -hmm. but I love winter. So I'm okay with it. Coming up, we have an interview with Drake Lockard. Enjoy. Hey, how's it going? 
Uh, today we have a great guest for you. We have Drake Lockard. Thank you for being on the show, Drake. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, uh, I'm going to ask Drake some trivia about him. What is Drake's first name? Drake. I will give <laughs> I will give you the options. Oh, so this is actually Drake the rapper. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, is it Aaron, Abner, Aubrey, or Asher? It's Aaron, isn't it? It is Aubrey. Aubrey. I know, right? Wow, that's yeah. shocking. Yeah. What was the last time you met a met a guy named Aubrey? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> Me neither. Okay, moving on. Which musician did Drake's father play drums for? Ray Charles, James Brown, Johnny Cash, or Jerry Lee Lewis? Jerry Lee Lewis. What is the answer? <laughs> it's like a multiple choice thing. We'll say it's Jerry Lee Lewis. Sweet. Wow, you really know wow. Drake really well. Yeah. Man, you know your name. Yeah. But uh, But the Drake we want to get to know today is this drake yeah so drake um tell us how did you find out about grace and what was your your journey here i so i work at a summer camp called kim uh, and a few students from grace go there so it's kind of looking around because i i want to be in ministry and uh did two years at community college went to grand valley didn't really like it over there but uh over the summer, I just felt like God was tugging on my heart to be a youth pastor and uh, didn't want to do that until the fall, but mm-hmm. I, the place I was living at kind of fell through. Sort of, My roommate got married, so we kind of got kicked out, mm. uh, and Grace was my last option, but I couldn't find any other place to live, and uh, I'm glad I end up here. I'm learning a lot. I love the people here. It's awesome community. So hmm, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So when you were at Mishawana, what were some of your responsibilities? Uh, so I'm a counselor. Been done three years of counseling, and I was a camper for ten years before that. Hmm. So I've been there for thirteen years. This summer will be my fourteenth. Uh, but this past summer, I got the opportunity to be a small group leader. So I was the head over a group of like four or five of our staff members and I uh, got to lead them through a Bible study slash devotional study of disciplines of a godly man, mm. which was really cool because I kind of got the sense of being a leader and it it kind of poured into me realizing that I wanted to, to be a leader and then kind of showed me that youth pastors what I wanted to do. So everything's always kind of rolled into each other and showed me what I really want to do. But I just get to hang out with kids and mm. be the head over them. And it's, it's really cool. I love kids. So mm. there that's, it's where God has my heart. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. So what would you say was a, was a difference for you between kind of being the spiritual guide for the kids mm-hmm. and then being a small group leader for your peers? Yeah. So it was just uh Making sure that my peers slash fellow staff members realized that I was always there for them to talk to. Hmm. Uh, more specifically at night, like after my kids went to sleep, because obviously the kids are the first priority. But uh, it was just cool. Like sometimes they would bring me some prayer requests and I would do that or they would ask for advice and hmm. I would be able to speak into that and uh but you, you have to find a balance because obviously you want to be there for them all the time, but the kids are there for a week and they need you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also being the leader, kind of keeping the other leaders accountable. Uh, there's nothing really that big, but just like, hey, like I saw you do this, like maybe this is a way that we should do this next time, mm-hmm. possibly like in a loving way. Because like, like I said, there wasn't anything like super bad, but just like, technique stuff that i've learned over the years Hmm. Uh, and i understand everybody does everything differently but uh, it was really cool just being able to give give advice and uh, be the head over those guys but also be their friends Hmm. so 
yeah, it was really, really a awesome opportunity to do this past summer. Yeah. In general, what would you say is your favorite part about camp? In general, just hanging out with the kids. Mm-hmm. Like I love their energy and I can match it. So it's, <laughs> it gets tiring on the weekends. I'm dead, but mm-hmm. during the week it's, it's just go, 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 go. And I love that. Like I love being outside and uh, my favorite part about camp is chapel. We're just dancing with all the kids and making the kids who don't want to dance, dance and just making them realize that it's okay to have that, that life outside of camp too. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't just something that happens at camp. Like you should, you could do this every day. Uh, but also spreading God's word, of course. Mm-hmm. Just the pouring into kids' relationship with God is the biggest thing about camp. And I feel like God calls me back every single year because I'm always like, uh, I don't know if I can do it. And I pray about it. And he's just like, you have a foundation there and you need to be there. Mm-hmm. And just puts a peace on my heart because obviously I don't get paid much. But I'm not doing it for the money. I would do it for free. And uh, I, yeah, the kids, they make it worth it. Doing doing God's work and giving them the glory for it all is really what it's about. Hmm. Yeah. So you you went to camp in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Are you from Michigan? Yeah, so I'm from the east side. Grew up in small town, South Lyon. It's between Novi and Brighton, if you know where those are. I know where Brighton is. Yes. Yep. So I'm right next to Brighton. Okay. And we kind of get dwarfed by them. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're growing a little bit more, more people know about us every year. So, okay. Yeah. So South line is pretty small. Yep. Yeah. Pretty minuscule. Yeah. It's, it's growing over the past years, but growing up, it was pretty small. And hmm. then our schools started bringing people in cause we have really good school system, but cool. Yeah. Do you have more than one stoplight? Yes. Whoa, yeah. you are on the yeah. up and coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we have like two or three downtown. Yeah. Okay, wow, that's oh, pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, <laughs> pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> so you grew up there. What, what was life like growing up? I, What's I your mean, family like? We we grew up, I started, we grew up going to a Lutheran church. Uh, I wouldn't say I grew up in a Christian household or anything, but uh, we always went to church every Sunday, but never really lived out that faith. And uh, for me, I never really heard the gospel, but I wasn't living a life of being awful towards people. Uh, then high school came around and that kind of changed. Uh, then my junior year, I just realized that I was missing something, that I was broken and I needed something i didn't know what it was and then god placed people into my life who brought me to church it's a group of friends uh i like left my old friends and started talking to them and brought me to a non-denominational church and their youth group just like spoke so much truth into me and uh, my junior year turned my life around basically Mm -hmm. literally like a complete 180 i had like a 1.8 1.8 GPA my freshman sophomore year and then my junior and senior year I had like a 37. Wow. Like people are like who are you? <laughs> uh and obviously like wouldn't have been possible without God. Uh mm. but parents always loved me everything and they saw the difference so they started coming to that same church and just see the difference in my family's dynamic mm. uh in that time frame. And then uh Yeah, and just been living i just moved out last year and uh life's been has its roller coasters but we're here and i'm thriving now so it's it's great just growing every day Hmm. yeah cool we'll get to that growth in a second but i kind of want to backtrack um so during those growing years in high school Mm -hmm. and then to the point when you were saved what would Mm -hmm. you say were like the the defining characteristics of what you were like in high school and maybe Mm -hmm. the things that contributed to that. And then when Christ stepped in, what was that change like and what exactly changed? Yeah. uh, So it was just freshman, sophomore year. I was just super reckless. Mm -hmm. I, the only reason I had that 1.8 GPA is to play sports. 
Oh, you had to have a one seven. And I was like, I'm going to do a little better and get a one eight. <laughs> no, yeah. I, but it was just being disrespectful to people and, uh, just falling into the temptations of my flesh. And mm. I never did anything like super bad, but things I shouldn't have been doing, mm-hmm. uh, then my junior year, I just realized that those things weren't good and that I don't want that in my life. And cool. uh, one of my friends actually like called me out and he was just like, you, there's something wrong here. And mm-hmm. he was the one friend that would like peer pressure me into doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And I was like, you're calling me out right now, but you're the one who gets me to do those things. And I was like, okay, something's wrong here. Like God's talk. I mean, in the moment, I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know why this happened, but looking back, it was God making that happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was like a month where I didn't have friends because I stopped talking to my my friend group, and I was looking for what I I wanted. Mm-hmm. Like I had a hole in my heart that needed to be filled, and I didn't know what that was. And uh, I reached out to some people and didn't know they were Christian. But they were basically like, hey, like we have a youth group, like you should come. And the youth group's like, Jesus, and you need to live a life of Christianity. And I've never heard that before. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, whoa, like that's super cool. Like growing up in a Lutheran church, I never, like I don't remember hearing the gospel once. Mm -hmm. And going to the non-dom church, it was just completely different change. And uh, I mean, my mom saw a change in everything like my sports changed like i was playing for god instead of playing for myself and uh yeah i pretty successful sports career in high school but that's decide, beside the fact <laughs> <laughs> you had to slip that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the it was just like my attitude in class every day like i i respected my my teachers and my classmates and like one distinct memory i remember is somebody cheated on me on a test and the teacher yelled at he was yelling at the person and i just remember like somebody's cheating on me because i like people used to be like oh you're so stupid all this stuff in class and i was like it was the person that used to bully me and Mm. say that was stupid that was cheating on me and i was like whoa yeah (laughs) i was like what is going on like in the moment i like literally sat there for like a minute or two and like it was like, what is going on? Something has changed. And I was like, literally, God is so good. Hmm. And uh kind of was living on and off of like realizing what it meant to live for Christ. And then I went on a se- uh, mission trip my senior year of uh, high school. And I realized on that trip, like what it meant to live a life for Christ. And hmm. that every single day is a day for him. And hmm. that he gives us those days to live for him and to make more disciples. Like I have the gift of eternal life and those around me, I don't know who has it and who mm-hmm. doesn't. So I'm going to live a life representing him so people can see a difference in my actions. And if somebody's not seeing that difference, then something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just bearing the fruit and being conscious of my actions, just thinking, what would Jesus do? Yeah, it's one of my biggest quotes that I like. Yeah, where uh, where was that missions trip? I just went to Detroit. It's an organization called Central Detroit Christian, and uh, we had an option to go like house to house and like do landscaping, whatever they needed at the house, or uh, to do VBS. And never really worked with kids much before, mm-hmm. but I was just like, like I I love landscaping and maintenance and all that stuff, and. But I was just like, I, I literally wrote, I don't care. Like, put me wherever. And they were like, yep, VBS, here you go. And I was like, hey, like, I loved kids. Like, I knew that. But I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, my first day was with the middle schoolers, and that was super easy, just playing games with them all day. And then they're like, hey, like, we need a helper with the five- and six-year-olds, which was, like, little kids. There's, like, 30 of them. And... I was the only male in that group and the kids at at central Detroit, Detroit Christian, they cling to males figures because their fathers Mm. aren't there a lot for a lot of them. So I basically had 30 kids for a week. It was awesome, (laughs) but it also showed me 
a lot of like these kids don't have what I have. Like my parents might not be the best parents in the world, but I still have them. And these kids, a lot of them don't have a dad. And I was like, in that week, it was really hard, but it was so much fun. And I realized that I wanted to work with kids and everybody around me like, have you worked with kids before? Like you're, you're naturally gifted. I'm like, no, not really. But like, I love kids and they're so much fun. And Mm -hmm. Through that, I kind of realized that I wanted to work at camp too. And uh, I mean, kind of having the background of going there for 10 years kind of spoken to that too. But yeah, the mission trip just opened my eyes to a lot of things of realizing that like there's a lot of mission overseas, but there's a lot going on right around us as well. And uh, guys laid out my heart to help the communities around us. Hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. So in an ideal world mm-hmm. uh, where you could do, you know, what you want with your degree that you're going for, yeah. w- what would that look like? I, if I could, I would like to start my church someday, hmm. like an inner city youth group. I mean, I would specifically want to be part of the youth group and just invite as many kids as possible like go door to door and just be like hey we're having food like show up not even like tell them like it's at a church and then they show up and they realize like oh like church is fun but like i volunteer for or i volunteered for community kids which is a nonprofit with a lot of african refugee families and uh i really like what they're about love what they're doing but i want to do my own form of that in a sense if i could Uh, obviously i want god to work through me and show Mm -hmm. me what he wants and right now i just feel like he wants me to be a youth pastor cool at some church so Mm -hmm. but that's that's my dream someday yeah Yeah. (laughs) but it's uh it's good to have something to shoot for yeah because i believe that god does honor the desire of our hearts Mm -hmm. Uh, he doesn't just abandon them. Definitely. Uh, but then sometimes he's like, no, I'm going to take you way over here and have you yeah. take you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool. So when, so when you got saved, mm-hmm. um, what about Christianity or like Jesus just like made that change? I, it's just the sense of realizing that my sins were forgiven. Hmm. Cause I know I did a lot of bad things and I was kind of ashamed for that when I went to church, but they were like, Jesus died for those sins and kind of just really emphasized the importance of that. Obviously our faith is nothing without the resurrection and mm-hmm. just realizing that all of that's washed away and everything that I'm going through in life, like Christ is walking with me. And uh, if I'm not walking with him, like what's the point? So I kind of made it initiative to to walk with him, even though at times I didn't know where I was going. I just kept on walking and kept on going and gone through a lot since then. But God's always been there and never failed me. So, yeah. So over the past, let's say, probably year or so, what mm-hmm. is what is the striking way that you've seen God work in your life? I... It's one thing that I really struggled with is being alone. I hate being alone, and I still do. Uh, but over the past year, I moved to Grand Rapids, and I didn't have any friends here. Mm. I moved in with guys that I didn't really know. And uh, just being okay being alone while also seeking out being with people. Because mm-hmm. I would get anxious when I didn't get invited to things or like, when I didn't have people to hang out with, I would get depressed. And uh, God just really was like, I, I'm i your main focus. And you're never alone because I'm always here. Hmm. Uh, I'm an extreme extrovert, but I can also be alone because of this past year. And God's just really showed me that I need to study his word instead of just read it. I mean, reading's good, but also like studying it and understanding like, his truth and that he never leaves and just like looking at the Bible and realizing like God never left. 
Mm. He was faithful through everything. I did an in-depth study of Genesis and it's just like that one book changed my life. Just realizing that like I'm created in his image and everything that he did was for a purpose and I'm still here to fulfill that purpose. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what are your, I should say, so that study of Genesis was pretty recent. Yeah, it was like March of last year-ish. Okay. I mean, obviously, it, was, it started in March and gotcha. just went on. Yeah. So what would you say uh, God is working through or in right now? Through your classes, through the things you're learning here, through the environment, through the community? Uh, it's just connecting with people and finding the fellowship that I'm meant to have. Hmm. Uh, and just having a community. I mean, it was really cool. Like the first day I came here, I already was put into a friend group and I have them, but I also want to reach out to more people. Uh, I feel like the, I mean, the first bad thing that God says in the Bible is to be alone. So mm. I want to make sure that those who are alone don't have that sense of being alone. Mm. Uh, not hanging out with them every single day, but just making them realize that like people are here. And uh, that's been like something that God's been put on my heart recently is just reaching out and talking to more people. Uh, but it's also the sense of knowledge. God's just been telling me to dig into his word. And uh, I, I like that because, I mean, I like, learning new things so mm -hmm. it's been a blessing cool yeah. cool um i just have one more question for you drake mm -hmm. um actually two more questions what sport did you play in high school because you you mentioned it a few times yeah so i i grew up playing baseball uh and then i wrestling in football and i played one year of baseball in high school and i wasn't a big fan of the high school ball scene but Mm -hmm. wrestling and football i played all four years i was four-year varsity wrestler and then two-year varsity football player and senior year i got all conference for football and wrestling wow. so i was the first all-conference wrestler at our school ever so oh my goodness it was really cool so don't yeah. get on your bad side because i you mean <laughs> suplex someone <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah wouldn't hurt a fly but no. <laughs> yeah so for and this is the last question. What advice would you have for students right now who are either struggling to find a passion for Christ mm -hmm. or just have like they grew up Christian, but they don't necessarily have that desire pushing them forward? Yeah. I, I think just the biggest thing for me to give it people advice is uh, I mean, God's, the only thing that we need in life really mm -hmm. uh but it's a difficult question <laughs> for me i would give them advice of just seeking out god's true nature mm -hmm. uh through reading the word uh, it's the story of jesus and just seeing how what he's done for us and how he's worthy of that praise and worthy through everything that you're doing to give him the glory for it all. And, mm. um, yeah, that's, that's probably what I would tell people because he's worthy of it all. And mm. if you don't read the Bible, you won't understand that. Yeah. I mean, he really put that there so we can gain an understanding and, We'll never sit here. We can't even fathom how worthy is he is because can't fathom anything about God, really, because he's way greater than we could ever imagine. But realizing that he died for us and how much that actually means hmm. has changed my life, but I would also say changed a lot of people's life. <laughs> yeah. And you should really just seek out what that means and how important that is. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Drake. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. And uh, next week we'll have another guest. 
Alrighty, that's all we have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as always, listen up. And take a note from this latte. You got this. Finish the semester strong. See you next week. Thank you for listening. See you next week on the Listen Up Podcast.